In this video, I'm going to screw up the Windows keyboard driver, and I'm going to do that by connecting with a kernel debugger and modifying the code of the driver. So we're going to use a couple of stuff for this video. First of all, it's VirtualBox, and I have here running a Windows 10 virtual machine, and I'm going to use the Windows debugger, which is called WinDBG. I'm going to list everything in the description if you want to check it out. So first of all, notice that in this video, we're going to play around with the PS2 kernel driver. That is because VirtualBox emulates this type of keyboard. What exactly is PS2? So this is a typical motherboard nowadays, and you got the PS2 port right over here. You can see that on this motherboard, it's unified into a single connector, both for the keyboard and the mouse. But on older motherboards, you had two separate connectors, one for the mouse and one for the keyboard. So if we go here to the device manager and click here on keyboards, and I'm gonna double click here on standard PS2 keyboard. Now click here on driver, driver details. You can see we have two entries over here, Specifically, the driver that we're going to work with is called i8042prt.sys. So remember this because we're going to connect to this driver in the kernel debugger. So I'm going to run msconfig and I'm going to go here for boot. Afterwards, I'm going to click on advanced options and I'm going to enable here debug. Debug port should be COM1 and baud rate should be 115200. That's going to be the fastest rate. This will basically configure kernel debugging through the serial port. COM1 is one of the serial ports. Now I'm going to click here, OK. And it's going to ask me to, to restart the computer. I'm going to say exit without restart. So I'm going to shut this down. After shutting down, I'm going to open the settings of the virtual machine by clicking here on settings. And I'm going to click here on serial ports. I'm going to enable port 1. Port mode is going to be host pipe. I'm going to uncheck connect to existing pipe. Let's name it, for example, backslash backslash dot backslash. Then you need to write here pipe, and then we can give it a name. Let's name it, for example, win 10 dbg. Now I'm going to copy it, because I'm later going to paste this into the debugger, and I'm going to click here on OK. Now I'm going to start the virtual machine. And in the meantime, while it's starting, I'm going to prepare the kernel debugger. So I'm going to open WinDBG. I'm going to click here on File, and then Attach the Kernel. Over here on baud rate, we're going to put the faster speed, 115200. And here on port, I'm going to paste what I copied there. Afterwards, click here on OK. Now it's going to connect. It's already connected to Windows 10, as you can see. Now I can see here that it caught a little exception in the kernel. We're just going to let it continue by running the G command. Now I'm going to go ahead and log in. Now I'm going to go ahead and open Notepad. Let's increase the fonts so we can see clearly. Okay, so the typing is currently fine. A, B, C, it works fine. Now let's go ahead and screw this up. So I'm back here in the kernel debugger and I'm gonna press on control break. And you can see we're now braked in the debugger and I can start running commands. So the first command I'm gonna do is remember that driver that we saw earlier, that was i8042prt.sys. I'm not going to put the .sys over here, but this is the name of the module in the kernel. So what I'm going to do afterwards is an exclamation point. And then I'm going to use a wildcard, and I'm going to search for all the symbols that have the word read in them. And X stands for examine. So I'm examining all the symbols that have read in them that come from the 8042 driver. Now I'm going to press enter. We have here a couple of results. I'm specifically interested on this function. It's called read port uchar. So I'm going to copy this by marking it and then right clicking. And now I'm going to put a breakpoint on this by running the BP command breakpoint. And then I'm going to paste it. Now I'm going to run G to continue the execution. Now I'm going to press on A for example. Now we can see it hit the breakpoint. Now let's go ahead and check the assembly over here. So I'm going to run the U command to disassemble this place. So we can see this function is quite short. It's just assigning EDX with CX. By the way, CX is part of the RCX register. And on x64, RCX represents the first argument that is passed into the function. That is by calling conventions. And afterwards, it's using the in instruction. This is an assembly instruction that reads something from an IO port. And the port number comes from DX. So essentially, it's coming from this line. And it's going to read whatever it reads into the AL register. AL is a single byte. So we're going to have, after this line, a single byte of data inside of the AL register. So let's read a little more about what is exactly going on here. So I have here on the left side the OS dev wiki. 
specifically on the article that talks about 8042 PS2 controller. And I'm going to click here on the section that talks about PS2 controller I.O. ports. And we can see that it tells us that the PS2 controller uses two I.O. ports. One is 0x60, this, that is 60 in hex, and that's the data port. And the other one is 64. Now we want to understand what port is currently used on this function. And as we can remember here from the in instruction, we can get the port number by reading the DX register before executing this line. So I'm going to step to the next instruction by pressing on F10. And now I can see we're currently on the in instruction. And now I can go ahead and read what is inside of DX. So I'm going to use the R command. That's going to be R for register and then DX. And it's going to tell me that DX is 64. And this is 64 in hex. So this maps into one of these ports. But I'm actually interested in the data port. So I want to know when is this 60. So I'm going to skip to the next call by running F5. Now I can see it hit the breakpoint again. Again, checking DX. That's going to be again 64. I'm going to press F5. Now the breakpoint was hit again. And if we check out DX, now it's 60. So this is good. 60 maps for the data port. So now we know we actually have data in AL after executing this line. So I'm going to go to the next line by pressing on F10. And now I read AL. And I get here a certain number. Now this number represents the data that comes from the PS2 keyboard. It's not really interesting right now to go exactly about what each number means. But what I'm going to do to screw up the driver is increment this number by 1. But I want to only increment this if we're on the 60 port. So for this, I need to slightly modify the assembly on this function. And I'm going to use for this the A command, that's assemble. But first of all, I want to view all the assembly that goes on on this function. So for this, I'm going to use the U command again. This time I'm going to pass in the L parameter, and I'm going to give it, for example, 12. This will tell the U command to display more instructions. Now I can take a glimpse at how this function looks like, the read port uchar function. And we can see we have a bunch of space over here to insert more instructions. So that's what I'm going to do. I want to check the port that is currently read, which is DX. And I want to see if it's the data port. If it's the data port, I want to go ahead and increment it by 1. This will have the effect of typing, and each time you type a character on your keyboard, it's going to go to the character on its right. So I'm going to start the assemble command on this return instruction. I'm going to start assembling from here. So I'm going to overrun this return. So I'm going to copy this address over here. Then I'm going to pass this into the A command to start assembling instructions. Now WinDBG is starting to ask me what instructions I want to put in place of the return over here. So this is the first address. And we have here a bunch of space until we get to the next function, which is on 70. So what I'm going to do on this line instead of return is I'm going to use the compare command, so CMP. And I'm going to compare DX, which, is, which represents the port that I'm reading from. I'm going to compare this for 60. So I'm going to check if it's the data port. Afterwards, I'm going to do the following. I'm going to say jump if equal, so that's going to be JE. So that is going to jump if it's equal to 60. And I'm going to jump here, for example, to this spot. This looks like we have a couple of space here for more instructions. So this will be the flow if we're actually reading from the data port. So in order to get to this address, I'm going to start by this function, which is 60. We need to get to 6C. So in order to get to this line, we need to add C to this function. So I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to add here plus, and then I'm going to write C, which will bring me right over here. So this will jump to this line if it's equal to the data port. Now the line afterwards, now I'm writing the instruction that will happen if we're not reading from the data port, if it's one of these. So in case it's not coming from the data port, I want to act regularly. I don't want to change all the other logic, only logic that is related to the data port. So in this case, I'm just going to return normally. Now, as we remember, we need to start from C, because that is where the jump is going on. But currently, I'm on B, 6B. So I need to put here a no operation. So I'm going to use the nop command. That is an assembly instruction that does nothing. Cool, and now we're on 6C. Now I can start putting the logic that happens if we're reading from the data port. So if I'm reading from the data port, I want to go ahead and increment the AL register. Remember, AL represents the data that is coming from the keyboard. So I'm going to increment this. Effectively, this is going to cause each key to press the key that is right next to it. After incrementing, I'm finally going to return. 
And you can see we reached 6f, so it didn't overrun instructions that are already over here, because the next function starts from 70. Now to end this, I'm going to just press on enter again, and you can see we're back here to kd. Now I can remove the breakpoint by running bc and then star. That's going to clear the breakpoints. And then I'm just going to run g. And now I'm going to type, for example, q. Let's see what happens. You see it type w, which is right next to q. Now I'm going to type in g, for example but it typed in H. Let's type in 7, for example, but it typed in 8. 